Good day everyone. I'm excited because I've got the opportunity to talk about the Lord Jesus Christ with you guys today. And uh, what I'd like to share with you today is a story from, from the Bible. It's a good place to start. <laughs> we don't want to share anything else with you. We don't want to share our wisdom. We don't want to share our opinion with you, our knowledge. All we want to share with you is the Word of God where it talks about the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the story I want to share with you today was an account where Jesus and his disciples had stopped by a well. And his disciples had left the Lord Jesus sitting there and they had gone into town to go and get food. And while Jesus was sitting at the well, a woman came with her, her containers to come and fetch water at the well. And as she was busy trying to get her water, the Lord Jesus asked this woman, he said, please can you give me some water to drink? And she was quite surprised because she, she, you see, Jesus was a, a Jewish man and this woman was what they call the Samaritan woman. And at that stage, at that time, the Samaritans and the Jews didn't uh, associate with each other. They didn't talk to each other, they didn't get along. And so this woman was surprised that Jesus was, was talking to her and asking her for something to drink. And so she asked him, why are you talking to me, a Samaritan woman? And then she also asked him, she said, uh, why do you want something to drink for me? So Jesus said to this woman, he said, if you knew who it was that was asking you for something to drink, you would have asked of me that I give you some water to drink. And then she was confused and she said, but you don't even have any containers to lower down into the well to get water. In any case, they have this conversation and it gets to a point where Jesus says to the woman, he says, the water that you will drink from this well will not satisfy you for eternity. Um, you will drink this water and a few hours later you will be thirsty again and you will want that water again. And then he said to her, but the water that I will give you is water that will cause you to drink that you will never ever thirst again. And this woman said, wow, I want that water. And um, Jesus said to her, gets to a point where eventually he says to this woman, he says, okay, I tell you what, go and fetch your husband and come back here and then I'll give you guys this water. I'll, 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 I'll have more of a chat with you. And the woman then answers the Lord Jesus and she says to him, I don't have a husband, I'm not married. And then Jesus says to her, he says, that's right, you've answered truthfully, but I know you're not married. Jesus says to her, I know in fact you've been married five times, and the man that you're with now is not your husband. So you, sort of, you immediately start to get a picture, I don't know what had happened to this woman's five previous husbands, I don't know if she had been married and divorced five times, or if her five previous husbands had died and she had been a widow five times or some of them had died and some of them had got divorced but you start to get a picture ultimately that this woman's life was in a mess and the man that she was living with now wasn't even her husband so they were living in adultery as well fornication and um, so you can get the picture that this woman's life was in a mess because when she asked the Lord Jesus for water as well she says give me that water that I won't thirst again so I don't have to keep coming to this well day in and day out so you also get a picture that she's got a heavy burden. This woman is burdened in her life. Her life is a mess. And I'm sure in the city where she lived, everybody knew about this woman. Oh, that woman's bad news. She's been married five times. She's living with a man now that she's not married to. So everybody knew that possibly she was bad news. And so you get this picture that her life was in a mess. But nonetheless, she, she talks with the Lord Jesus and eventually it gets to the point where the Lord Jesus reveals himself to her. He tells her who he is. And he says, I am the Christ, I'm the Messiah. Because she says to him at one point, she says, I know that the Messiah will come. And Jesus says, he that talks to you, I am him, I am the Messiah. And she believes him at this. You know, that's all the Lord wants from us, is for us to believe in him. God even tells us in his word that he loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son, speaking about Jesus Christ. So whoever believes will not perish. In other words, you won't end up spending an eternity separated from God in torment, in hell, in the lake of fire. But if we believe in the Lord Jesus, we will live with Him in, in heaven forever. And what makes heaven so special? It's a glorious place. The Bible tells us the streets are made of gold there. Gold's only good enough in heaven for the streets. But that's not what makes heaven so special. What makes heaven so special is that our Lord Himself is there and we'll be with Him. But what we have to do is we have to believe. Now the problem is many people claim to believe. 
But if we truly believe, our life will show it. The things that we do, the way we live our lives will show that we truly believe. Because if we truly believe, we'll surrender, we'll stop the sin in our life. The Lord will give us that ability and we will follow Him and walk with Him. I'm not saying we'll be perfect. But the Lord will be working within us and busy perfecting us until the day that we stand before Him. And then we, when we see Him, the Bible says we will be like Him. That's when we will reach that perfection. But true belief is something different to just believing, guys. It's like if, if Yan Umkumar, if I had to say to you, tomorrow morning at 4 o'clock in the morning, the biggest tsunami that's ever hit this whole world, in the history of mankind, is hitting Amkumars, and it's going to wipe out the whole of Amkumars, it's going to come up here, it's going to wipe out Rosneath, Craigieburn, everything. And um, if I asked you, if I told you the story and I asked you, do you believe me? And you said to me, yes, Baron, I believe you. I would wait to see if you truly believe me, because if you truly believe me, you would go home, pack up your belongings, take your loved ones, your family, get them in the car, and you would get as far away from here as you possibly can. Then I would know you truly believe me. But if you didn't, you would go home and relax and carry on sleeping like nothing was going to happen. And it's exactly the same with the Lord Jesus, guys. We can say we believe. But true belief is when we come and we fully surrender and we allow the Lord to have His way in our lives. We stop living for ourselves and we live to follow Him. Same as the disciples. Jesus came and He saw two people, uh, Peter and his brother, Andrew, fishing. And He said to them, follow me. And they left what they were doing immediately and they followed Jesus. Then he came across uh, James and John. They were busy fixing their nets for their fishing. And he said to them, come and follow me. And they left what they were doing and they followed him. Now I'm not saying leave your jobs and follow Jesus. But what I'm saying is forget about yourself. Our lives are not our own, folks. Jesus has paid a price for us. Let's come and follow him and surrender to him. That's what true belief is. And so this woman, she truly believed. And how do we know that? Because she leaves her water pots. She doesn't need them anymore. And she goes into the city and she speaks to the men, the men who know that she's bad news. And you know what she says to the men of that city? She says, come and see a man. Come and see Jesus, in other words. So immediately, this woman, it's, life is a mess. This woman who's possibly viewed as bad news, a troublesome woman, she tells the men of the city to come and see Jesus. She becomes an evangelist in a sense, if you could say. And um, the men of the city... They believe what the woman is telling them about Jesus. And so they come and they meet with Jesus. And after spending two days with the Lord Jesus, they say to Jesus, Now we believe not just because of what the woman has said to us about you, but because we've seen you and heard you for ourselves. And guys, that's what we are doing here. We're here to tell you about Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you, it doesn't matter where you are in your life at the moment. It doesn't matter if you find yourself living in the streets. It doesn't matter if you find yourself in a place where you're addicted to drugs. It doesn't matter if you find yourself in a place where you're addicted to alcohol and you can't go a single day without it. it doesn't matter if you're a prostitute. It doesn't matter where you are in your life. If you're beating your wife at this stage in your life, obviously that's not good. But guys, it doesn't matter where you are. There's nothing that's in your life that the Lord Jesus can't help you with. There's nothing going in your life that the Lord Jesus can't give you forgiveness in. Folks, when we come to the Lord Jesus, you know what we want in life? Everybody wants to just have peace and to be, to be able to enjoy life. Folks, we can never do that. There's no true joy and true peace anywhere else outside of Jesus Christ. The Lord tells us in His Word that the peace of, of our God is a peace that passes all understanding. But that peace is only available to us in the Lord Jesus Christ, folks. So if you want that true joy, if you want that true peace, folks, if you want to know true love in your life, I want to say to you, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ today, just like that woman at the well. Look what Jesus can do for you, folks. That woman's life was changed that day. As I said, she had been married five times. She was living with the man, the sixth man in her life. But that day her life changed because she met the seventh man, God's number of perfection. He created the universe in six days. He rested the seventh day. He met, she met the seventh man, Jesus Christ, and her life was changed forever. When I say forever, I don't just mean the time that she lived here on earth. But I mean for eternity, because when she died, she went to glory, folks. she went to heaven. She went to spend her eternity in the presence of God, in His courts forever, in paradise. And folks, that's what the Lord wants for us. If we die without the Lord Jesus Christ, folks, that's a bad place to be in. Jesus told the story where He spoke about two men, a wise man and a foolish man. They both heard the sayings of the Lord. 
And today as we share with you guys, we're hearing the sayings of the Lord because we're not sharing our opinion, we're sharing God's word with you. And Jesus said, the difference between those two men is one man heard and he did nothing with it. He carried on living for himself. He built his house, the Bible says, on the sand. That means he built his life on the dust of the earth, on man's wisdom, man's ability, man's understanding, man's strength, man's money, whatever it may be. But the end result, when he faced the storms of life, his house fell. And God tells us in his word that it was a great fall. Why is that? Because folk, if we leave, if we die in this life without knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, that's a great fall. Because we'll spend eternity in hell in the lake of fire. And that's not what God wants for us, folk. That's not his intention. That's not his heart. How do we know he doesn't want that for us? Well, he proved that. He proved his love by sending Jesus Christ for you and I, folk. And if we come to the Lord Jesus, like that wise man, he heard the sayings of the Lord and he obeyed them, he followed them. He listened to the Lord. He had true belief and he built his house on the rock. See, the rock of our salvation is Jesus Christ. He built his life on the Lord Jesus. He followed him according to his word. And folk, when the storms of life came upon, upon his life, upon that house, the Bible says it never fell. Not because he was a, a good builder, because he used better bricks, or better cement, or whatever it was. It says it never fell because it was found to be standing upon a, a rock. He stood firm because of the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ. And folk, that's what God wants to give you. He wants to help you. The addictions in your life, the messes in your life, He wants to help you overcome those things. But in yourself, you can't do it. That's why we need the strength of the Lord Jesus. If we could do those things ourselves, we wouldn't have needed Jesus to come and die upon the cross for us, folk. And folk, this is the honest truth. The Lord loves us. But we make the mistake of thinking, oh, God's love, God's love, He's just going to forgive me. It doesn't work that way, folk. Yes, God is love. But if you want to be able to partake of that love, if you want to enjoy that love and know that love, in your life, and folk, you need Jesus Christ because it's only available to us in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to say, just like that woman at the well, I don't know you guys personally, I don't know where you are in your life, but God does. He knows where you are. And so He sent us here today, just like He sent that woman into the town to tell the men of the city, come and see Jesus. He sent us to tell you, come and see Jesus. Yes. Doesn't matter where you are in your life, what mess there may be in your life, what addictions, whatever it may be, folk, come to Jesus today. Let him work with you. Let him help you. I'm a testimony to that. My brother is a testimony to that. We both lived the life without the Lord Jesus. We both lived the life we were involved in drugs and alcohol and all those things. And the Lord saved us. And he turned our lives around. Not just for here and now, but for eternity, folks. And that's what God wants to do for you. He wants to give you the gift of eternal life, folks. Folks, the honest truth is this, that all have sinned. All come short of the glory of God. Our own good works, our own good deeds which we think make us seem holy or good before God. God says they're like filthy, dirty rags. But there's only one work that pleases the Father. The Father said about Jesus Christ, He said, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to Him. If I come, I'm pleading with you today. Come and see Jesus. As I said, it doesn't matter where you are in your life. Folks, there's nothing too big that the Lord cannot forgive you. There's nothing too big that the Lord cannot help you with, folks. Only He can turn your life around and give you the true peace and joy and love that every soul looks for. It's found in Jesus Christ. All right, guys, we're here. If you want us to pray with you, if you want to talk, please come and see us. Um, if you want to know more about the Lord Jesus, come and see us. But if not, if not, I pray, please, I ask you, please, take these things that we've shared with you today and keep them close in your heart, keep them in your mind. If you're too shy to come and see us when you go home, pray and ask the Lord to make these things real to you, to help you to understand these things, folks. Because the honest truth is, we don't know when our life is going to end, folks. The Bible tells us our life is a vapor. It appears for a little while and it vanishes away. We don't know when we're going to die. Heart attack, get run over, whatever it may be. Somebody break into your house and kill you. We don't know, folks. We may not see tomorrow. So I plead with you, take these things to heart. Cry to the Lord Jesus. Come and see us if you're too shy. When I pray, speak to the Lord. Cry to Him, folks. He'll hear your cry. Let Jesus come into your life, folks. Let, him, uh, let Jesus come into your life so you can find forgiveness from Him, folks. You can find the gift of eternal life, folks, before it's too late. The Lord tells us that we must call upon Him while He is near. Folks, He's near today. Today is the day of salvation. Jesus came so that people like you and I could have that life. So come and meet with Jesus. Amen. Thanks, guys.